So what is this biblical vision of, of sexuality? Well, our, our sexuality is rooted in the person and nature of God himself. Because, of course, we learn in the scripture that God made human beings in his image and likeness, male and female, he made them. And this carries with it a number of, of, of important repercussions, implications. First of all, he is, he is a creative ruler. And so we participate in his image, in that rule. Indeed, he, he gives us dominion over his world. He is a ruler. He says, you rule in this world. I put you in. And then, of course, he's immensely fruitful. He creates out of nothing. He, he loves more, making more of his world. And he calls us to participate in his fruitfulness. And he says, you, go into all the world, be fruitful, create more in my image, more human beings in my image, bearing my image well. And then finally, and this brings us to the, to the sexual part, God is a lover. That is his nature. The persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, pour themselves out to one another in endless love. And God calls us into not only this love of the Trinity, but he calls us to love one another as he loves us. In other words, sex is given for images of God to love one another as he loves us. Well, you say, when I hang on a minute, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that when God loves, he loves passionately. If, I mean, if you look at the, some of the pictures of God's love in the Old Testament and the New, these are intensely passionate, affectionate. Um, he pursues us. He sings over us. He courts us. In fact, one of the, the strongest images of God's love for his people is the bride, groom, and the bride. It's, it's the lover of a husband for his people. Over and over and over again, we see that. And of course, when Jesus comes in the New Testament, one of the earliest titles given to him is bridegroom. And the end of all human history will be the marriage supper of the Lamb, of Jesus, with his people. So this is a powerful metaphor that threads its way through the Bible. And it's rooted in the image of God. He is a lover, we are lovers. And of course, that love expresses itself in, in all kinds of ways. The, the first person we look into their eyes, our mother, we're drawn in love and affection and she to us and we bond together. And then we discover that love in friendships. But in its highest, most intense form, we find it in the love of a spouse to whom we give ourselves. And so God's love is passionate in that way. But there's always a second hallmark to it that goes hand in hand with it. His, his passionate love is always faithful love, covenantal. He doesn't do one night stands. He doesn't have an affair with his secretary and then get tired. He doesn't go off with somebody else. He is bound to us in love. And you could say he is bound to us for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, to the end. And that makes marriage, which is the greatest expression of our, our being lovers for one another. That, that's what makes it such a beautiful picture of God's love. And indeed, when, when Paul remembers this and cites that we're made one flesh, we, we become one flesh when a man leaves his parents, united with his wife, Paul says, this is a great mystery. And mystery there, he doesn't mean it, it, it's a kind of a, just a puzzle. He means this is something bigger and more wonderful than we will ever understand. And so marriage is for us a picture of the love of God. 